Can I make these, maybe? Okay. True, there wasn't anyone else in the lounge other than myself before the turbulence. But if the killer was in the elevator along with the victim, then this is a different story. There we go. I have it! I'm sorry, but I don't understand, Mr. Edgeworth. So, I just uh, jumped the gun on that one. I can prove that someone other than myself was here around the time of the murder. What? Really? Yes, it's rather simple, actually. The proof is in the pudding, or rather the grape juice in this case. These footsteps have uh, here confessed to me this very fact. That someone ex exited the elevator alive. Seeing as how the victim is dead, that would mean a second person. But couldn't the footsteps have been hit Mr. X himself? No, he fucking died in the elevator, sweetheart. But if you take a look at the victim's shoes, you can see the shoe soles are spotless. I know that too. Which means... Mr. Hicks wasn't alone in that elevator. In fact, it's quite the opposite. He was having a good old fucking time in the elevator, probably. There's actually one other person inside the elevator. Easy peasy. Investigation complete, sir. What's going on over there? Oh, God, no. Unforgivable. This is unforgivable. Do you understand what I'm saying? The movie is late. It's the same level of bad as, the, as if the plane arrived late. Uh, but the movie... What? I will not take to talk to you anymore. You are just wasting my time. What is the mas matter, Mr. LeBlanc? If there's no emergency, please return to your seat, sir. Do not uh, tell me what to do. I need to sit down. I need not to sit down. Well, Mr. Prosecutor, did you prove you are innocent yet? If you would like, I will prove my innocence to you right now. What nonsense! Are you saying my eyewitness testimony is mistaken? Not mistaken merely that there is room for doubt. It'd be most honored if you could- I'd be most honored if you could please tell me what you saw in detail once more. Fine, suit yourself. I swear to God, I hit you. I'm certain I saw Mr. Hicks enter the elevator. It was when the needles on my pocket watch pointed to the 6 and the 12. And the body was discovered 15 minutes after that in the lounge, yes? And you, the only person in the lounge at the time, must be the criminal. Mr. Long's, LeBlanc's conclusion seemed to make logical sense. After all, the only person in the lounge at the supposed at time of the murder was me. So my eyewitness testimony, if you can think you can destroy it, then come and let me see. Hurry! Do I look like a man who is having the time to wait for you? Why is he so irritating? I'm the one accused of murder here. Anyway, I must find a way to discredit Mr. LeBlanc's account somehow and fast. Goodbye, sir. Get out of my fucking face. Ah, oh, it was then the needles and blah 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 blah. Okay, so... I wanted to hit... Did he enter alone? I said, Blanc, were you able to get a good look at the inside of the elevator at the time? Of course I saw what was inside. You're sure that the victim was in the elevator alone? Yes! The only person inside was that Mr. Man Hicks. Mr. Hicks, man. This allows the out, but it's a bit too important to let go. The only person inside was that Hicks, man. Something being dragged. Objection! Here you go, buddy. <sighs> Sadly, Mr. LeBlanc. What is it? There's a very good, glaring a contradiction in your testimony. What do you mean? Please take a look at the area in front of the elevator. There at the spilled grape juice. Yes, and if you will, will you admit you also spilled it in with blood? No, it spilled itself during the turbulence. But the interesting thing here is that the set of grape tree footprints. Footprints? Yes, the ones that lead from within the elevator out into the lounge itself. It's evidence that proves that someone other than Mr. Hexa exited the elevator alive. Oh, there must have been another person in the elevator with Mr. Hicks. Now then, I'm done playing games. Why don't you tell us the truth? 
Can you please translate for us? Uh, no way. That's totally impossible. I guess is what he said. No way. That is totally impossible. I know there was no other person in there. I saw it with my own eyes. If you want to know what I think, Mr. Edward, I don't think Mr. LeBlanc is lying to us. I suppose she's right. He doesn't seem to be lying. But then what does it mean? What about this contradiction? Mr. LeBlanc, please just once more, will you recall the details of what you witnessed for me? I was very upset when Mr. Hicks passed by my seat. I was checking the time over and over again. I wanted to follow that man with my eyes when he passed me. And I saw clearly and I saw clearly into the elevator he was entering. But I swear there was no one else inside. No one. Mr. Blanc, if you would please calm down. What? Dare you two have an issue with my eyewitness testimony? No, n not at all. Please forget I said anything. And again, he doesn't appear to be lying. But I can't just let his testimony stand as the truth. Seems like he really disliked this dude. He's sweating crazy. Why? So are you still upset now? I'm always upset. The only time I am not is when I have the piece of art in my hands. It's surprisingly easy to believe that about him. But I was even more upset when Mr. Hicks walked by me. I was always checking the time over and over. Why? Why were you so attentive to the time? Because, because something unforgivable was happening. Hmm, come to think of it, you were yelling about something unforgivable earlier. I was going, uh, giving a complaint to the attendant about the movie starting time. Return back to me my time and money. You understand the point. Movie. So you're talking about the inflated one that's mentioned in the magazine. Hmm. The movie doesn't start until like... Ah, oh, six. Yeah, okay. A summary of the plot and the start time. Interesting. They were supposed to show License to Love, Laugh, Maim, and Murder. I cannot see that movie in my country. You can only see it in the international flights. I look forward greatly to that movie. I check my pocket watch whenever possible so I would not miss it. I even set my pocket watch to the destination time when I came on board. So my watch is not wrong, it's matched the schedule. But the movie was still late, very late. Your pocket watch. I'd like to ask you a little more about it if that's all right. The movie I wanted to see would not start until I checked my pocket watch many times. So this movie you mentioned, it is the one listed in the Sky Magazine? Yes! I was so looking forward to watching it. Mr. Nero, was the movie shown on this flight? Yes, it was shown at the scheduled time. Isn't it possible you simply th slept through it by accident? Nonsense! You doubt me! No, not... Now stop pointing at me like that. On how did he miss a movie he was clearly hoping to see? I checked my pocket watch a great many number of times. That much I know for sure. Hold it. it was on a different time. You sure about what you just testified at, Mr. LeBlanc? Yes, of course. I was very busy. I am immediately busy when I land. I have many places to go and no time to waste adjusting my pocket watch. I see, that was a very valuable statement you just made. Hmm, flatter me all you want, but you will not get one cent out of me. That's alright, all I require is this piece of testimony. Wait, do I have something that, like... Wait. Oh, uh, departure time zone. Oh, uh, okay. I was gonna say, there's... Like, he just in the wrong area. Yeah. Good job, buddy. You literally just fucked up. Here you go. Mr. LeBlanc, you said this just now in your testimony. I even set my pocket watch to the destination time when I come on board. Now, if your watch has been set to your destination time zone, it would mean that your watch is displaying the time in our, of our destination. Yes, and the correct time is worth it six cents. I would like you to take a look at this. If you believe the Sky Magazine, clocks on its flight run in accordance with the time of the departure time zone. Of course, the movie scheduled would also create it, uh, also created with that in mind. Mr. Nero, for confirmation's sake, what time zone is this flight aligned to right now? 
Well, we made a short stop at a transfer point. That's right. It was in that small Asian country, the Republic of Zeng Zengfe, Zengfa. But we didn't readjust our onboard clocks at that time. So right now, we're still running on Borginian time. What? The time difference between Borginia and our destination is nine hours. If that's the case, it's only natural that your watch would be out of its sync with the schedule. Wah! Further, with your analog watch set to our destination time, it would appear to be running three hours fast when compared to the flight onboard clocks. It also changes everything about your testimony. And you can bet one million cents on that. In light of this information, it means you saw Mr. Hex three hours prior at 3 a.m. Damn, he was having a fucking grand time at 3 a.m. My million cents! This should clear up all the remaining accusations. So this basically winds the time frame for the time of death, right? Yes, because Mr. LeBlanc saw the victim enter the elevator at 3 a.m. It means that the time of death could be anywhere from 3 to 6.15 a.m. The question now is where was Mr. Hicks during that span of time and what was he doing? Uh, I've got something to say. You are? Yes, um, oh. I'm Kimmy... Melee? Melee? Kimmy Melee? Melee? I'm a flight attendant. And what is it you wish to say? Well, I think your story's a little different from how I remember it. What do you mean, Cammy? I saw Mr. Hicks sitting in a seat at 5 a.m., you know. What? How can you be so sure of the time? Oh, that's right, he pushed this call button while we were parked at the transfer point. Ah, oh, the stop we made for the refueling of the and cargo transfer in Zheng Fa, correct? Yes, it was from 4 to 5 a.m., according to our clocks. And during that time, did any of the passengers leave or did any new ones board this flight? No. Not a single person got off or on in Zengfa. Just a touch and go then. What about the flight crew? The few who are handling the cargo transfer might have temporarily gone on or off. A <laughs> fucking smile. But evidently everyone, including Kemi and myself, came back to the plane. So basically, I can assume that no one left or got on or off since our initial takeoff. Interesting. I should keep that in mind. Fucking crazy hair, though. Like... Yeah, and I answered his call. I can tell you Mr. Ackby Hicks is what he there in his seat when we took off again at 5 a.m. Yes, Miss All right, then that put the time of the murder between 5 and 6.15 a.m. Okay. Now what time did you come down to the lounge, Mr. Edgeworth? I remember coming down here almost as soon as we left the Republic of Zengfa. The uh, You! You were here the whole time from five, yes. Then you were the one who would be could be the killer. Mr. Edgeworth, were you really here in this lounge the entire time from five A and onwards? Unfortunately, yes. But then how do we explain the footprints? Is that not obvious? This man waited for Mr. Hex here in this lounge, waited to kill him, and then he put the corpse into the elevator. That is when the turbulence happened. My eyewitness testimony may have been mistaken, but at what time I saw Mr. X enter the elevator on the second floor does not matter, because the entire incident is concluded here in his lounge. Everything happened in this lounge. Is that what you really believe, Mr. LeBlanc? What? Do you have another idea? I simply feel that there is something out of place in the scenario you presented. Is there something that can tie this crime to a location other than the lounge? Yeah. Footprints. These footprints, in which direction do you think these are headed? Copy the in-flight shop. Correct. They're headed in the direction of the shop. But they look disconnected. They end all of a sudden. You're right to the point out that they do not from one do not form one continuous trail to the shop. However, there is another piece of evidence that connects the shop to our crime scene. Besides the footprint, what else points to the in-flight shop? The little murder weapon. Take that! The murder weapon. This little piggy bank is sold at the in-flight shop. It is sold there and only there. It is not displayed here in this lounge. How then did it find its way here? Don't you find that a tiny bit suspicious? Huh, such a trivial point. It only means you prepared it, taking it from the shop first before coming here. It doesn't prove your innocence at all. 
There's no way to win with this man. If I may. What is it? You see, well, it's just Mr. Edgeworth says. Oh, and why do you know this so well? Well, it's just that a piggy bank was there in the shop. I saw it with my own eyes. And where was the? Where was this? It was maybe around 5:40 a.m. Isn't that just before we hit that patch of turbulence? That's right. You were in the shop just before the turbulence? Um, yes, I was. Come to think of it, Mr. Nero, when I found the body, I believe you came out of that door. Yes, I did. And what is beyond that door? That's the flight attendant's room. Then you were on the first floor? Yes. I had to do something at the shop and in the flight attendant's room. So I went to the shop first, then to the flight attendant's room. Are you saying you passed by me at some point? Yes, you seemed really into the issue of Sky Magazine you were reading at the time. I don't suppose you noticed me walking by. I vaguely recall someone walking by, but I didn't take notice of who it was. Anyway. The piggy bank was definitely there at the shop when I went there. Why did you go to the shop in the first place? I went there for a work-related matter. Wink. Work, you say? Yes, the upkeep of the shop is one of, also one of my responsibilities. Why did you not say anything about that until now is what I want to know. In any case, I believe it's clear that the shop needs to be investigated as well. Shall we head over there then? What is it now? Aren't you forgetting something, Miss Ra Rhoda? Do you need the captain's permission to check the shop? No, I haven't forgotten. But I've already asked him for permission to search the entire plane. So I think we're all right. Huh? That's weird. What is it? Well, I just talked to the captain, see? He said that he didn't give you permission to do anything like that at all. What is the meaning of this, Miss Tenero? Mean she's lying. Go on, admit that you are. You said you had permission to search all over, but you don't. And yet, here you are. You flight attendant, what are you trying to do? Pull the sheep over us? Wool over us. The captain's calling for you, Miss Rhonda. Rhoda. Oh, but don't worry. I already got permission to search the shop from the captain. See, unlike you, I do things the right way. Mr. Nero, why would you do such a thing? Please excuse me. New cat, new partner. Looks like I get to be in charge now. Please go back to your seat, Mr. LeBlanc. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth. If you would follow me, I'll be your guide from now on. Yes, fucking please. This is about damn time. There's something about Miss Tenera that has piqued my curiosity. But right now, investigating the invite shop is my top priority. There's other things I'm investigating at the exact same time, too. Come on. Miss Melee, I'm about investigating the in-flight shop. You have no use to me asleep. Wake up. Oh, what? What's up? I need you to come with me so I can search the shop. Go on ahead without me. I'll catch up with you later. How has this woman not been fired yet? God damn it. I want to work with her. Oh, it's open. March 12th, 8.32 a.m. Flight I-390. Whoa, what's the fucking broken glass for? So this is the in-flight shop. It's quite a mess in here. You think? I guess I'll have to clean things up then. <laughs> Hold on! You can't clean up a potential crime scene! Oh, thank goodness. I hate cleaning so much. Oh, God. <laughs> Good shit. I mustn't rush things here. I must remain cool, calm, and collected. Because this piggy bank was left at the crime scene. I don't want to clean. There's a very good chance the killer had paid this place a visit. And flight shop. Can I check? Can I talk with you? I don't know much about this shop, but you can still ask me about whatever. So what do you think about the shop happened regarding this case? What's happened during this case? Oh, I don't know. I guess. I think you're the killer, though, Mr. Edgeworth. I can assure you that I'm just- I'm here in the shop to prove just the opposite. You can also. Yeah, but how is- it was me that got you the permission to look around. You know? So don't forget that, okay? 
<laughs> How am I supposed to thank you properly if you insist on falling asleep? Well, you know what? You'd really show your thanks. You'd see the item for sale over there. Sorry, but you're going to have to make do with my words of appreciation. Love. Fucking cute. Victim was seated in first class. Uh, I fly attendant in charge of taking care of first class from Northern European Republic of Virginia. Says he's a wealthy art dealer obsessed with time. 62? Made 24. Flight attendant, uh, charged with taking care of first class. Both are 24. Uh, yeah, but we already know who's better out of these two. Uh, what, what do we got here? Inside this display case is a row of lifesavers and life vests for sale. We sell a lot of those when there's some kind of accident or something. But some people buy them even when nothing's going on. How about a Mr. Edgeworth? Care to buy one? Since the shop is one chopper away from being sued. What are these? Uh, those are our company's completely original line of suitcases. They're practically flying out the door. That's how popular they are. You should buy one and see how you like it. You won't regret it. Perhaps that's how things work on this flight, but in the real world, you should try and, and buy. No way. But either way, it doesn't really matter. True, either way, why would anyone buy a suitcase after they boarded the plane? Anyway, anyway, see see that? Just look at all the Mr. Uh, I Fly has painted on there. Cute company mascot, isn't he? They're painted on it with a lot of care. Doesn't he look like he's about to jump out at you? It is certainly making something jump inside my stomach. Huh? Oh, I guess there's no fooling your refined taste. You look like you really wanted to get one. And I thought I was gonna finally make my first sale. But you saw right through it. Glad that's done, though. Never make me try to give you a sales pitch ever again, okay? I never showed any interest in it at all to begin with. Indeed. <laughs> really, it's pretty horrible, isn't it? You wanna know something? The suitcase was designed by Miss Rhoda. Miss De Niro designed this. Yeah, there's a company-wide contest. Well, it does have a very sharp design sense. <laughs> sharp? Like stinky sharp cheddar, maybe. I really have no idea why the big wigs decided to go with it. It's so bleh. Mr. Nero designed this, didn't you? It's definitely not what I would have expected. It's really ugly looking. Ah! You okay? I'm fine. Please watch yourself, Miss Melee. Letting a suitcase freely roll around has got to be a safety violation. Here, I'll put it back. Thanks, sweetheart. Beautiful flowers in a beautiful arrangement. I feel cleansed just by looking at them. Mr. Edgeworth, you're getting pollen all over. Oh, excuse me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Excuse me. The glass from this display case and door is shattered all over the floor. It looks like there's nothing on display inside either. Wait, actually, I think there is something. What's this? A mini captain's hat. Mr. I fly in the tiny captain's hat. Connect those. There we go. Hmm. That had probably used to be the piggy bank's head. Let's give it a go and see. Cute. I believe this piggy bank was forcefully removed from this case. Does this mean that the killer broke the glass to get at it? Possibly. But the glass is outside. Eh? Really? Don't tell me you don't know what things go where in this shop. Well, I don't. Miss Rhoda's in charge of this place. So come on, how should I know anything? But since the further inspection of this display case is needed. Won't we'll rest until I uh, inspect every nook and cranny. These books. The glass on this door is broken. Perhaps it was the killer who broke it in order to take the piggy bank. But it's a bit odd that the inside of the case is so devoid of glass shards. Plus, the glass broke rather cleanly. Ah! What is it? I touched the glass and I cut my finger. It hurts, Mr. Edgeworth. It hurts. 
Please tell me you can deal with such a minor cut on your own. I will suck her finger. <laughs> uh, stop, 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 stop. I can't do that. Stop. Mood. Anything else? Is this the same man as the man one portrayed by the statues around the show? Yeah, that's a paperweight of the founder of iFly Airlines, Mr. Hugo iFly. On the bottom shelf, we have a cute one. The middle shelf is the realistic one. And on the top shelf, that's the floral version. Floral? Are you sure about that? Let me guess, you just said the first thing that came to your mind, right? Haha. <laughs> Looks like it, the bullseye. She's fucking cute as fuck, dude. Holy shit. Yep. I'm flying to... I fly airlines related books align the shelf. The history of iFly Airlines, future of iFly Airlines, seven wonders of iFly. Fight on iFly Airlines. Working name of Go Yo Go You Fl Airlines. I Heart I Flying. Titles make it very clear that they won't be making the top seller unless anytime soon. For security, there's a lock in the display case. Miss Melee, if I may ask you about this lock. Ah, the one who's in charge of the shop is Miss Rhoda. So she's got the keys to all the display cases. Let's see. Oh, I bet you want to buy something. Do you want me to go get the key from her? No, that's all right. Jeez. This spot's somehow connected to any of the evidence I hold. Uh. No. But what it does tell me is that it's the person that didn't have the key because she would have just unlocked the door, taken it out. Unless she, like, opened the door, punched the glass out. Oh, this is getting fucking complicated. Oh, AD chest. Fuck. There are all kinds of luxury name brand ma merchandise on sale on this display case. And they're lined up in such a manner that it's a scream by me to any passersby. Uh, couch. Stuff toys are just like the one Miss Melee is holding are displayed here. They're relatively cheap, which explains why they're displayed so haphazardly. How about a Mr. Edgeworth? You know you want one, too. They're great for when you're stressed. Why do I envision stuffed animal abuse when she says that? She's fucking cute, dude. I don't care, okay? There's a wide selection of souvenirs for sale in these display cases. You know what I'd suggest? Sorry, but I have no intention of buying souvenirs on this trip. Okay. And how about you buy something for me, then? As a present. I can't think of a single reason why I'd want to buy you anything. I've had my eye on that pendant for such a long time. Try paying some attention to me when I ask you something when we'll talk. Then we'll talk. Stop being mean to her, okay? She's fucking cutie. On this log. Okay. I think I'll use the, uh bear on this one, or uh, whatever. Do you need something? This piece of evidence is... is... never mind. Temporary lens. Thinking too hard about when the glass broke. It's simple. What was here when the glass broke? Oh. Okay. <laughs> There's definitely something very unusual about this. I was like... thinking like... If she had the key, she would have just unlocked it. About what? If the killer had taken the, broken the glass to get at Mr. Ifly Bank, there should be shards of glass inside the case itself. Oh, I see. Yeah, I see it'd be like that. However, there's not a single piece of glass inside the display case. Nope. No, there isn't. Which means that the glass was broke from inside out. The piggy bank must have fallen over from the turbulence and right through the glass. Yeah, that's for sure. There's so much glass all over the floor. I'm willing to bet that this hat was knocked off its head at the time, too. Huh? Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Which leads me to believe that the killer took the Mr. I Fly from here after the turbulence. Okay, cool. Yeah. Take your power naps on your own time, Miss Melee, and listen when I'm talking. Ah. <laughs> but the murder occurred before the turbulence. Which rules this piggy bank out as the murder weapon. Seeing in the piggy bank is not the real murder weapon. It's fake. Yes, at this point, that is a very real possibility. Uh, 
then what if we went to, uh, when the killer went to take Mr. Eiffel and broke the glass by accident? This display case is is locked, so that is highly unlikely. Yeah, but there's one person to cut up. Oh, and who would that be? It's Rhoda, of course. I mean, she's the one in charge of this place, so she has the keys to everything. It's Rhoda to Nero, huh? <laughs> okay. Suitcase. There's something up with this fucking thing. I feel like there's something up here. Like, the suitcase should have been moved, right? Okay, thank you. Yes, there's definitely something wrong here. <gasps> What's with this on you? Uh -huh. Tell me, Miss Melee, don't you think there's something strange about these suitcases? Oh, well, sure, they totally ooh strange, like the color in this thing. That's not what I'm talking about. Don't pay attention. Ah, you're scaring me, Mr. Edgeworth. Sorry. Um, mm -hmm. These suitcases are lined up a bit too prim and proper. Ah, yeah, they look a little bit upright, uptight, don't they? But I guess they take after their creator. <laughs> Again, that's not what I meant, Miss Melee. Don't you find it unusual that these cases are the only things disturb undisturbed by the turbulence? Never mind, I would sooner find an answer by inspecting these suitcases myself. On closer inspection, they are really quite hideous. <laughs> wonder how Miss Rhoda would have reacted if she'd heard you what you said just said, huh? <laughs> What's wrong? She makes a good point. It would be wise of me to watch what I say out loud. What's this? I have spotted something that's not quite right. Up this suitcase. Oh, there's no little thingy thing stoppers. Oh, well, there's stoppers on the other one. There's something very peculiar about these wheels. As in... As in... There are no stoppers in the place of these. Without stoppers, one would think that the turbulence would have sent it flying. And... <sighs> and so it was very likely that the suitcases was placed here after we hit that turbulence. Let's take a closer look at it, shall we? Yeah. Zoom. A thousand two hundred dollar price tag. Not exactly priced by someone with a conscious, I'd say. Paper fucking expensive, dude. Holy fuck. Ah, uh, there's something dragged. What's this? The wheel's covered, completely covered in something. The color in this sense, it appears to be the substance in question. is grape juice. But why would there be grape juice, uh, grape juice on the wheel of a suitcase? It appeared to be unlocked. Let's take a look at what's inside. A piece of cloth. And it's soaked with blood. Ah, it's blood. It appears that this suitcase is very strongly tied to the murder after all. Investigation complete. So explain this to me. What does this suitcase have to do with murder? I believe it's pretty safe to say that the killer used the suitcase in some manner. Such as to move something, perhaps? Yeah. But aren't you just talking about the cloth, then? That alone is too small. A larger item would have been needed to move at what I'm thinking of. The thing I believe the killer used in the suitcase to be transported is... Missing cell phone. Uh... Okay, sure. Take that! Miss Melee, wake up! Huh? Did you say something that's now, Mr. Edgeworth? I mean, I don't know, but I don't think that's it. Let's know. I was just seeing if you were awake. Real explanation begins now. Is she really asleep? I think I believe the killer used the suitcase to transport. Please tell me it was the fucking body. Something that would fit inside a suitcase that is also covered in blood. Sounds like a dead body, doesn't it? Oh, fucking epic. It's cool. Bloody cloth appeared. But, but... In light of this, I would say that Mr. Hicks was moved into the elevator from someplace else. That means that the murder was committed in an entirely different location. So you're saying that after the moving the body into the elevator, the killer brought the suitcase here and just left it? Exactly. What is it? Nothing. Just that 
I was thinking about what Miss Roto said about coming here for something. Excuse me, Mr. Edgeworth. I wanted to give you a bit more time, but I'm afraid I wasn't able to convince the captain. Oh, isn't that convenient? I'm very sorry, Mr. Edgeworth, but the captain feels that he has allowed you ample time. He says that he'd appreciate it if you could wrap it up here and return to your seat. I understand his sentiments, however, I'm not. if I'm not allowed to continue the investigation, the crime scene may become contaminated by the time we land. If I must stop, then I insist I be allowed to oversee the preservation of the two sites. Under your supervision, of course. If that's your only condition, then I believe we can accommodate your wishes. I'm here to assist you in any way that I can, Mr. Edgeworth. Sounds like fun. We can camp out and watch out, uh, out watch over everything together. I found proof that the real crime scene was not in the lounge, and I have enough evidence to prove myself to be innocent of any wrongdoing. And yet, regarding what Miss Melee reminded me about Miss Tamara, I can allow my investigation to end here. The truth must come to light. Oh no, I feel like she's really suspicious. Just saying. Ba -ba -da. Save.